And this number right here, this little baby number, square root of 2, killed the most famous Greek mathematician. And how to kill him? I'm going to show you how to kill him. What I just right. said, that this symbol right here means what number times itself is equal to 2, right? Now, somebody give me an idea of a number that I could take times itself that would either be equal to 2 or at least come really close. Raise your hand. 1 is 1. Let's write that down. 1 times 1 is 1. So that's too small. 1.5. Write this down, please times 1.5, because this is what Pythagoras began to do. All right, 2.25. So this is just a little tiny bit too big. So the answer has got to be between 1 and 1.5. One and okay? 1.25 times 1.25. 1.5625. And it stops there? Okay. All right, so that's to between 1.5 and 1.25. Another suggestion. Another suggestion. Preston? Now, 1.15 would be even smaller than this one. Okay. Want to try again? Okay, Jesse? All right, let's try 1.35 times 1. Point, Jesse? 1.825. 8225. Oh, baby, we're getting close. We're going to have to try bigger than 1.351.45 1. squared. 1025? Yeah. One, zero, smaller two. than this, but bigger than that. Jesse? 1.37. Okay, 1.37 times 1.37. 1.8769. All right, so we're getting there. We are so getting there. Okay, I need something between these two, between 37 hundredths and 4,500. 1.4 times 1.4. Excellent. 1.96. Oh, how far are you away, though? We're only 4 hundredths away. 1.42. Can I something? What? I did 1.41 and it's 1.9881. I did 1.42 and it's over. It. Oh, baby. All right. What'd you get for 1.42? 2.0164. Okay. And what'd you get for 1.41? 1 1.9881. 1.9. That's Thank you, Mara. That was really good. Look. If I put the small one here, 1.41, and the slightly larger one, 1.42 here, is there anything between those two numbers? Yes. Uh, well, a half? Yeah, like okay, how do I write 1.41 and a half? How do I write that as a decimal? He's absolutely correct. His intuition is excellent. Matt? Uh, 1.415. Okay. All right, 1.415. Four one five. We have to go out another decimal. So confusing. All right. This number right here, because I can add a zero on the end of both of those, and halfway between 410 and 420 is 415. All right. What do we get? 1.415 squared is. Oh my gosh! It's too big, but it's just a little bit too big. All right, so I need a number smaller than this, but just a little bit so small. 1.4125. Yeah. Okay. 1.4125. I think you people may have it. 995. Nine, wow. Okay. All right, we have two, two nines. If I could just get a string of nines there, then I would have like 1.9 repeated. It's going to be a little bit bigger than this, guys. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger but a little bit smaller than that. So this is a five. Okay, I need something between 50 and 25 here. All right, let's try it. 1.4135. We have calculators. Pythagoras did not have calculators. We can do this. 1.9979824. Ah, it has to be bigger than 4135. How about 1145? 1.4145. Okay, let's try it. 
You can't do it. The decimal string would be so long. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, they don't work either. All right. This, at this point, I need to, well, you know, Pythagoras worked on this for years. Years. Because he did not have a calculator. Every time he wanted to test the hypothesis, he had to multiply it all out by hand and then do it again to double check. And he kept getting closer and closer and closer, but he never got the 2.000000. And so he just he just quit, quit his life. Just it was just terrible what happened. I can't go into all yeah, it's terrible. But then, shortly after his demise, a young kid, not much older than Bill Preston here. I'm not, I'm not making this up. It is so historically true. A little kid said. What if there's a new kind of number out there that we've never known of before? That's a decimal that just goes on and on and on and on forever. Pi. Like pi. You know how pi goes on and on forever? Never repeats, never, you know, stops. And so this little kid, this young man that was Preston's age, invented a new kind of number. And Pythagoras, the little wuss face, he didn't stay around long enough to learn about it. They're called irrational numbers. The square root of 2 is an irrational, it's an irrational number. It's a decimal that goes on and on forever and never repeats. I always have kids who will raise their hand and will say, but there is a square root of 2. We can just quit the square root button, okay? If you put 2 and you hit your square root button, which usually looks something like that, go ahead and do that. Let's see how close we actually are. Ah, you should get 1.4142135621362. And it runs out of space. It's not long enough to show you any more of the numbers. Most kids think that whatever happens on the calculator, it just stops right there. But in real life, this thing goes on forever. Yes? Uh, is 2 the only irrational number? No. Great question. She says, is 2 the only irrational number? No. Every number. Every number that is not on your perfect square chart there, that is not a perfect square, every other number in the world, if you try and square root it, you're going to get an irrational or an imaginary number. For example, square root of 3 is ugly. Square root of 5 is ugly. Square root of 10 is ugly. Square root of 20 is ugly. Square root of 22 is ugly. Can you but square root of 25 is nice. It's just 5. Can you move the screen down? Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. You know me, I'm always doing that. So it turns out that there are an infinite number of these irrational numbers. They're just